What's going on YouTube? Today's video, we're going to do some kicking systems. The first kicking system we're going to do is called the SID system. This is where you apply no spin on the cue ball and it's a one rail kick. As you can see, I marked a long rail and this is how it looks. The first diamond will be number one and it skips into number two. And then you skip a diamond, this will be two, two and a half. And then it goes to the third diamond. This is three and a half. This one's the fourth diamond. This one's four and a half and this is five. Where this system on the rail is, this is just an increment of one. This is where your cue ball is gonna be laying at. So this is increment of one, increment of two, three, and four. And I'll go to the other side of the table where this is where the cue ball will be kicking into and hopefully hitting the object ball. On the opposite side of the cue ball, this is where the cue ball will hit the rail. This is in increments of 10. So I got the first diamond, you can see this is 10, this would be 20, 30, and then of course 40. So this, the way the system works, it's a multiplier. So example, I have the cue ball placed on the first diamond, and I got the nine ball placed on the fourth diamond on the rail. So you would actually multiply one times four equals four. If I get the cue ball with no spin, hang into this rail and hang the fourth diamond, which should be over here, I should be able to hit that nine ball. For this example, I have the cue ball on the first diamond and the ninth ball on the fourth diamond on the long rail. To apply the SID system, you would apply no spin on the cue ball, multiplying four times one, equaling four. If I hit that fourth diamond, I should be able to hit this nine ball. For this example, as you can see, I have the cue ball located on the third diamond. And I have the object ball located also on the third diamond. You would multiply those two numbers equaling nine. So if I hit the cue ball with no spin on the ninth diamond, I should be able to hit this nine ball and hopefully make it or not give ball in hand. For this example, as you can see, I have the nine ball located on the fifth diamond on the long rail, and I have the cue ball located on the fourth diamond on the short rail. You multiply those two numbers, four times five, equaling 20. If I hit the 20th diamond on the opposite rail, I should make this nine ball into that corner pocket. The examples I did was pretty simple because the object ball was landing on a whole number. What if your object ball was landing on the halves, such as this is the half diamond, this is one and a half diamond, this is two and a half diamond, three and a half diamond, four and a half diamond, and your cue ball is on the first diamond. If you multiply anything by one, it's always going to be that constant number. But what if your cue ball is on the second diamond? How would you memorize those? Easiest way I memorized it is one and a half times two, it's always going to be three and then two times two and a half is going to be five three and a half times two is always going to be seven four and a half times two is going to be nine so if you memorize three five seven and nine that will give you a constant number for your second diamond for the cue ball legs but what if it's on the third diamond so it makes it a little bit more tricky because now these are different numbers, and I'll tell you how that works. Now let's do the multiples of three. As you can see, I have the object ball on the 1.5, and say your cue ball is on the third diamond. So, if this is 1.5, you just out multiply one times three, and you would add 1.5. Example, one times three is three, plus 1.5 equaling 4.5. Now it lands on the second one, this would be 2.5. So two, times three is six, and you add 1.5, making it 7.5. Now your object ball lands at 3.5. So you would just multiply three times three, equaling nine, plus 1.5, equaling 10.5. And you would do this to the fourth diamond, so this is 4.5. So four times three 
equals 12, and you add the 1.5, equaling 13.5. What if your cue ball was on the fourth diamond, and your object ball lands on the half diamonds again? The easiest way to memorize it, because you know on the two diamond, it would be 3, 5, 7, and 9. And you would multiply that by 2, because it's twice the distance. So what that means is, if this was, if the cue ball was on the second diamond, and this was a constant number of three, now it's on the fourth diamond, you multiply it by two. So three times two is equal to six, and then you have five. Five times two is what equal to 10, and then this one's was seven. Seven times two is 14, and then you have nine. Nine times two equals 18. Like I said, if you memorize the three, the five, the seven, and the nine, it makes the kicking a lot more simpler. So let's apply this number system. As you can see, I have the cue ball on the second diamond. I have the object ball on the one and a half diamond. So you memorize those systems by, by the twos. So that would be the three, the five, the seven, and the nine. So you know it's on the third diamond. So if I hit the third diamond on the opposite rail, I should be able to hit that nine ball. So, what if the object ball was on the two and a half, and your cue ball, again, is on the second diamond. So you know that's three, and then that's five. So if I hit the fifth note, the fifth diamond, I should be able to hit that nine ball. And now it lands on the three and a half. And your cue ball again is on the second diamond, and you memorize it three, five, seven. So you know that's on the seventh diamond. So let's hit the seventh diamond to so hit that object ball. And then it lands on the four and a half, and cue ball again is on the second diamond. You multiply, multiply your numbers. 3, 5, 7, and 9. So let's aim at the ninth diamond so I can hit that object ball. Now let's do where the cue ball is on the third diamond and your object ball is on the half diamond. So for this example, I have the object ball on the one and a half and the cue ball on the third diamond. So the way I do it is I multiply it three times one, making it three. But remember, it's on the half, so we add 1.5, making it equaling 4.5. So if I hit the fifth diamond, I should have hit that nine ball. So what if your object ball lands on the 2.5 and your cue ball is also on the third diamond? So easiest way to do it is three, times two equals six. And remember, 1.5, adding it, equaling 7.5. So you hit the seventh diamond, or the eighth diamond, I should hit that nine ball. Now it lands on your 3.5. And again, cue ball on the third diamond, so three times three equals nine, add the 1.5 equals 10.5. So I hit the 10th diamond or the 11th diamond, I should hit that nine ball. Now it's on your 4.5 and your cue ball again on the third diamond. Three times four equals 12, add the 1.5, making it 13.5, so if I hit the 13th or the 14th diamond, I should hit this nine ball. Now let's do some kicking where the cue ball is on the fourth diamond and your object balls are on the half diamonds again. So for this object ball, this is on the 1.5. But if you remember on the second diamond, the three, the five, the seven, and the nine. 
And all your cue ball did was move twice the distance because two to four is twice the distance. So you multiply it by two. So if the 1.5 equals three, so that means three times two equals six. So if I hit the six diamond, I should hit that nine ball. Now it moves to the 2.5, and of course the cue ball again on the fourth diamond. So you memorize it three, five, seven, and nine. So if this is five for the two, and you multiply it by two, five times two equals 10. So if I hit the 10th diamond, I should hit that nine ball. Now it goes to the 3.5. Again, cue ball on the fourth diamond. So three, five, seven, and it's twice the distance. Seven times two equals 14. So if we hit the 14th diamond, I should hit that nine ball. Then it goes to the 4.5 and twice the distance again, because this is three, five, seven, and nine. Nine times two equals 18. If I hit the 18th diamond, I should hit this nine ball. For the sit system, I mostly focus on the half diamond system. If you think about it, I filled in the gaps. What that means is if I have the cue ball on the first diamond and the object ball landing on a whole number such as the two. If you hit, if you multiply one times two, of course it's gonna be two. Object ball lands on three, one times three, it's gonna be three. If you have it on the half, 2.5, can you really see that 0.5? But now, if your cue ball lands on the second diamond, and all I did was fill in the gaps with a half system. What that means is, Two, if your object ball lands on the two, two times two equals four. And I told you to memorize the three, the five, the seven, and the nine. All that did was bridge a gap because two times two equals four, two times three equals six. What number was this? The five. So the difference is it's only one whole diamond. But now let's move the cue ball to the third diamond. And all I said was multiply what the number is if the object ball is on the half diamond. Two times three equals six, and you add 1.5 equals 7.5. And then three times three is nine. So this is 7.5, and this one is six, and this is nine. So all I did was bridge in these gaps. You can see it's only a 1.5 increments. Now your cue ball is on the fourth diamond. Like I said, you memorize the numbers for the second diamond, the three, the five, the seven, and the nine, and you just multiply it by two because you move two spaces away. So technically, this is the six, the 10, the 14, and the 18. And that's on the fourth diamond for the cue ball. So it lands between your four and the five, making it 4.5. Four times four is 16. Four times five is 20. That's four diamonds away. If you notice, all I did was bridge the gap between two diamonds off because this was 18 and this is 16. You're only two diamonds off. If your object ball lands in between, this is 18 and this is 20. It's pretty much easier to guess between a two diamonds off to hit this object ball versus having it four diamonds off. So let's do an example where your cue ball is on the fourth diamond and your object ball lands between a half diamond and a whole number. This example is on the four and the four and a half. So if we know four times four equals 16 and four times the four and a half equals 18, this would be 17. But now say your object ball is between the four and a half and the five diamond. Four times five equals 20. Four and a half times four equals 18. So you know this should be 19. So let's place this back to 17. 
And if I hit the 17th diamond, I should hit that nine ball. So let's put it on between the numbers again. So four and a half and your five. Like I said before, this is 18, this is 20, this has to be 19. So if I hit the 19th diamond, I should hit that nine ball. With the sit system, it's a system that's pretty accurate. But the thing is, your cue ball is always never flush to the short rail and your object ball is never flush to the long rail. With this system, I actually got it accurate where the cue ball can move up to the second diamond on the long rail. If the object ball starts moving away from the long rail, we actually have to shift our diamonds off from the first diamond to the second diamond because we move one diamond away. Say your object ball is one diamond off from the rail. So what you have to do, you gotta shift your numbers also. That means now your 10 is gonna be the zero. This is gonna be your new 10. So this is zero, 10, 20, and 30. And I'll go over there to show you what the cue ball number has to be. If your object ball is one diamond away from the rail, therefore your cue ball numbers have to move also. So this is going to be your new zero, this is going to be your one, this is your two, and this is going to be your three. The numbers on the side rail, on the long rail, it never changed. It's still going to be your one, two, two and a half, three, three and a half, four, four and a half, and five. Since the object ball moved one whole diamond off, so now this is going to be your zero, this is your one, two, three, and that's your zero, and your 10, 20, 30. So I have this example. Like I said, you could be about two diamonds away from the short rail, and it's still pretty accurate. So this is one times one. So if I hit the one diamond, I should be able to hit that nine ball. So let's go ahead and move it to the second diamond and it's one diamond away. Let's see how accurate this system is. So we are at the two on the first, excuse me, on the first diamond since we removed it, this is the first diamond, one times two. If I hit the second diamond, I should hit that nine ball. I just did a brief explanation on the state system. I think it's a great system. It's very accurate as long as you do not apply any spin on the cue ball. Stay tuned. I'm going to be doing more kicking videos. Thank you for watching. See you next time. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe me. Don't forget to thumbs up. Bye bye. <laughs>